I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine, his name is Len Schultz. Len Schultz is a very well-known uh, Colorado organic farmer. And uh, is that a good way to put it? Okay, good. And so what we're going to do right now is I'm actually going to interview Glenn to, to uh, keep this fun. And um, I've got some questions for him I think you're going to appreciate. But now it's a great chance for you to understand his knowledge and concept of what organic farming really is, how that compares to what you're being quick with in terms of being healthy foods that are on the market, and what his knowledge is of Dr. Wallach's philosophy of nutrition and minerals and soil nutrition and how that impacts your health. So please help me welcome the notorious, the amazing Glenn Schultz. <laughs> chance to hear you speak before and I've, I've known you now for probably as, as long as I've been part of longevity which is now a little over five years I remember the very first time we spoke you really intrigued me with your background and your knowledge of, of soil soil nutrition and really what organic farming looks like you told me a couple stories that scared the crap out of me and uh, you probably don't remember what those stories were but I went home thinking oh my goodness what in the world am I doing and you got me thinking and so I'm really thankful for the message that we shared here, but I'm really thankful for you because you have not just come to Yongevity because you're interested in building a huge team of people, but you really want to share this message because you're passionate about it. And um, uh, today, if you could, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. And what, I, what I'd like you to talk about first is what is organic farming and how does what you do and your philosophy of organic farming compare to how the big companies like you know, Monsanto and the other big boys out there using GMOs, genetically modified uh, stuff. Um, how are they tricking us into using this word natural and uh, you know this added and the term organic? How is that being exploited to um, trick us? And are we being tricked? And what does it mean to be tricked? That's a load of questions, well, but if yeah. you could kind of address some of those things, that would be a great start. Uh, you guys like these questions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll condense it down. So, um, you know, I, I got into farming. I'm not a classically trained farmer. I was a corporate guy, but I did grow up on a homestead ranch. And uh, so my grandparents owned this ranch, and we had orchards and gardens. And so we were kind of self-sustaining for, for a big part of that. So that I had that background as a kid. Uh, got in the corporate world and just kind of um, started um, feeling a lot of health issues, and I knew something was wrong. So started investigating what was going on with the food and uh, wasn't liking what I was seeing, knowing how food should be grown, right? From growing up on a homestead to what was happening out there. It was a lot like uh, we hear about um, contractors taking shortcuts, you know, when building a house. So you can build a quality house or you can take one and you can do a lot of shortcuts and cut costs. So essentially they did a lot of cost cutting measures. And, um, so the more I got into, and I thought that foods was going to bring my health back. So I actually started eating organic for seven years before we even bought the farm. I was helping my kids overcome a lot of health issues and still wasn't getting the result I needed. So I said, well, I'm going to go the next step. And I, I'm probably one of the few people you'll ever meet that actually went and bought a farm to get healthy. Okay. And so... <laughs> Uh, boy, was that a big shock when they got me there because I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do here. And, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was in, and I just wasn't growing anything very well, but, uh, was studying a lot and wanted to grow the best strawberry for my daughter. Strawberry? Strawberry. Okay. Right. Because she loves strawberries, but strawberries are like one of those most heavily sprayed <laughs> fruits out there. And, and um, so... Why is that? Why do they heavily spray yeah. strawberries more than anything else? Well, it's just because they, they, one of the shortcuts that farming does now is they just push things as fast as they can. So that the, the term is turns and earns. So the more times you can pick strawberries and get strawberries out of this one row, 
the more money you'll eat, make, right? So instead of letting them maybe mature and, and, and grow in a more natural way, they're pumping stuff into them. And so in doing so, they, they create a, a weaker berry and, and bugs like them. And, and actually bugs, from, the, from my standpoint of view, and I, I, there's science backing this up, bugs are there to clean up dying and dead plants. They're like the buzzards. Wow. So anything that's being sprayed because it's being attacked by bugs is telling you that that's a weak plant. Healthy plants actually produce compounds that are a higher order that, that insects can't digest. So when you grow food right, you don't need to spray it. Right. And that's something they don't want you to know. How many people knew that? No, no idea. Yeah. I have no idea either. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious. When you see these strawberries that are like as big as an apple and you have to eat a strawberry, like is that is that normal when strawberries are that big or they or, or is it just because that's a different species and there actually are really monstrous strawberries? Combination. So yeah, there's there's big strawberries, but the big ones you're seeing and they're red and they look delicious, you just gotta buy them, right? And then you get them home and you bite into it and it's mostly hollow in the center and white right. and right. you're like, where's the flavor? Mm -hmm. And so the strawberries I grew finally, and, and, and this is where I crossed paths with Wallach and, and his philosophy on minerals, uh, because his teacher was a guy I was reading about, and his name is Albrecht, uh, Professor Albrecht, who taught Wallach. Wallach is a protege of, of Albrecht, so is a couple other pretty famous people. Anybody familiar with Western A. Price? Yeah, Weston A. Price, right? Okay, well, back there. So. And Weston A. Price is, uh, is quite a character, too. And he went around the world studying cultures uh, for, he was a dentist for uh, teeth formation. And he discovered that, that these cultures that had uh, minerals in their soil had perfectly straight teeth and required, you know, braces. And even though they didn't even brush, there was no cavities. Right, and it just so we have confirmation, and we've always had this confirmation out there. And um, so, I, I probably lost track of your question. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was asking you about um, you know how we're being exploited with the with the use of the word organic. Is it being overused? Is it really true that when something says organic, that it is organic, or is there separation between what you understand as organic and what we're being marketed as organic? So the term organic is is owned, if you're a farmer, is owned by the USDA. And um, they get to define it as such. And so what we've seen is kind of a laxing of, of the meaning of that word. It, it, in the beginning, it was a seven year, you had to let the soils rest and hopefully get things out. Now it's just a three year wait, and they don't touch the soil. So most of us would think, well, organic, we'd have to test the soil, right? Well, not necessarily. So in, in essence, you can, you can be in some pretty industrious type soils and still be organic because it's not part of the test. And they don't test vegetables and fruits off the farm either. But it's just, it's more of a paperwork deal. I, I certify, I use these uh, products in my farming and I, did, I avoided these. That's what organic mainly is now. And I will I still do it because I don't want the chemical loads and I, I avoid GMOs uh, as much just as much as I can. And I would I would advise others to do the same. But in, in my estimation, you have conventional farming and you've got organic and maybe it's down here, maybe it's up here. They're pretty much the same and I Recently, I got confirmation of that from a soil scientist who studies the microbe life of the soil. And she's taken samples from an organic farm and looked at a microscope. And you'll see these microbes just swimming around. And then she's taken one from a conventional farm. She says she saw more activity on a conventional farm than she did the organic farm. So it depends on how long they've been organic and what that farmer is doing to regenerate that microbial life. And it's important, but because they have a definition, there's lots of farmers that will gain that system and uh, 
it takes three years, they'll be organic one year, and then they'll come back and spray, and then wait another three years and transition, and, and just all kinds of crazy things. You think one soil got into an organic system it should stay, but it doesn't. And then your neighbors, and I have this situation, they could be out there just spraying up a storm, and a windstorm comes over and just dumps it on your farm. Mm -hmm. Big problem, right? Especially if you're buying from me and I'm, I'm trying to say this is chemical free and, and uh, but under their guidelines, it's okay as long <laughs> for the most part, you can keep your certification and that's not right. Okay, so it's you gotta know your farmer. That's what I would, uh, that's what I would say on that. But so it's not what you would think it would be. Our definition as people and their definition as an industry are completely different. How's, how's concerned should we be right now when you think about um, the, the book or the movie that came out, uh, Forks Over Knives? Um, when you think about, uh, um, you know, the, where Monsanto is going right now and how much they're controlling and some of these farmers that are, are, are manipulating the quality of our food, what can we really do about it today? What, what are our choices? What are our options so that we don't become subject to the next guinea pig after 10 to 20 years goes by and we don't know what to do and we've been eating genetically modified stuff? What are our options? Good. And I do have that answer. So uh, just recently, uh, a couple days ago, the, the largest, one of the largest organic farmers out of Central Oregon is being forced by the county that they farm in <laughs> to eradicate the weeds on their farm, meaning they're, they're being forced to put Roundup on their organic farm, which will no longer make them organic on a 2,000 acre farm. They are associated with the largest organic distributor in the country. And it, it's a typical play that we see from big industries. So they're, they're, uh, Ground swell, oh, we can't have weeds. Your weeds are blowing into our fields, and weeds are, you know, the Taliban, right? I mean, they're just, we got to go to war. <laughs> and um, weeds actually are doing a service to the soil. They're doing a service to the microbes in there. And it's, it's just a really screwy type of thing. The answer is to your question is I, I believe, and this is what I, I think the longevity nation can bring together to us is, is that we start a movement saying we will buy food that's grown with not only uh, the minerals, which are important, and I'm going to give you an example of that, but also with microbes. And we'll buy food from you, Mr. Farmer, and, and with Young Jeffy Nation saying that we could go to some farmers, more farmers, because I grow, I grow maybe five or six things, and that's all I got. And I just grow, what do you grow? I got eggs, strawberries, raspberries, gooseberries, um, blackberries, chickens, cows, pigs. Do you do beef and chicken? Uh, yeah, right now they're, they're building soil. So I've got, I've got a system right now where the animals are helping me build microbes in the soil. So I'll, I'll be able to put in some plots, so they're just going to. So when you say you got these things, do you have enough for all of us? Yeah, in this room, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I would like to get other farmers involved too, mm -hmm. because um, this is this is what's really ailing our country. You, you want to look at the root cause of why everybody's so sick. This is this is it. And Wallach's known this. <laughs> the more I learned, the more I said, Wallach. Uh, it, it's, it was like a shift, and in, in all of a sudden, we're going to say um, tomorrow we're all going to start, um, I don't know, uh, uh, burning uh, tires for heat, right? And you're like, oh, God, that would be awful, right? It's like, you know, we're going to burn tires for heat, the smoke and the soot. And, and, but our, com our country made that decision at one point right after the war and says we're going to start using petrochemical for fertilizers. And they, they uninstalled all the people that were had a, a, a grasp on minerals and on, on biology and gave universities big bucks and said, you're gonna hire that guy and you're gonna start teaching how to farm with this. 
this, and they did it to all the land grant colleges. So this was a complete cleaning of the slate. It's something we don't ever get to hear about, but that's what happened. While I taught under the guy who was one of the kingpins of that, I mean, one of the fathers of this, this thinking, and knew at that point, says, oh my God, we are making a huge, huge mistake. And we were, and we were, and so I've been able to prove it back on my farm. So when you do what Wallach says to do with putting it back on the soil, oh my gosh, things just flourish. You drink this stuff, you just flourish. So it's it's always been the answer. Wow. Yes. Question. Well, I mean, you know, we were talking about this how our food was our medicinal, right? I mean, we used food for medicinal purposes. It kept us healthy. It kept disease away. It did all these things just naturally, but now there's so much unnatural that it's compounding and adding to our disease and our poor health, and the medicinal values are gone. Right. How many, uh, just real quick, how many of you in here are vegetarians? You vegetarians? No one wants to admit it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vegetarian that eats meat. All right. <laughs> so that's like my daughter said. I'm a vegetarian, but I feel like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, vegetarians uh, suffer from a deficiency of B12. B12 is, is produced in plants, providing that there's one particular mineral in the soil. You know what that mineral is? No. Cobalt. Cobalt. And it's got to be available. It's got to be in the available form where a plant can take it up, and if that plant has cobalt, it can make B12. Mm. Well, guess what we've done? With, we keep spraying our soils, we kill, we kill the biology that's responsible for chewing that rock mineral up and making it available to the plants. That's what that spray <laughs> does, and then that spray also is a chelator which binds those, those metallic minerals for, uh, in a chemical bond that makes it unavailable to the plant for 11 years half-life. So another 11 years, it's half the strength, and another year is half that strength, and half that strength. Half. We've been spraying this for, for how many years? And so when we say the soils are zapped, they're zapped in, in so many different ways. So many different ways are zapped. So it's not in our food. And, and our plants are so weak, we have to spray them to keep the bugs off of them. But what was I telling? It's the weak plants. You eat weak plants, you're going to be a weak person. Mm. I feed weak plants to uh, my animals. They're going to be weak, sick animals. Mm -hmm. The thing people don't realize, though, it doesn't have to, this is, you can circumvent this whole system. You don't have to start in the soil. You can put in the nutrition like Wallach's done in this drink. You could add it to the water of the chickens. You could spray, I spray their grass and eat the grass. They get it that way. I give it to the cows. I give it to the pigs. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody flourishes. Everybody flourishes. So, because of our plant derived formulation uh, and all the vitamins and minerals, and he's figured out the 90 essential nutrients, the guy is true in my book, an Einstein, a living Einstein. And he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's one of my gurus. Well, we're about out of time, Glenn. Okay. So, your, your uh, final word to everybody here what, what, what do you want people to? No, um, through what you're sharing here right now. What do you want to know? What do you want to remember most and walk out of here with that's going to impact the way they think about nutrition? Well, okay, so I love this company. I love what they stand for, and I love the opportunity, what, what's happening. Um, I want you to know that these, these products are real. Uh, I want you to know that they've, they've, I've tested them on my farm and had things happen that, that we just, like, make your mind go wow who knew you know and i, I wasn't any kind of professional i was just kind of a hack i was just like well, he says to do that i'm just gonna do that and then bam it happened right and um so i would say that if you don't know your farmer get to know a farmer i want to i want to grow a group of farmers so introduce me to your farmers or or let's let's say hey let's get some more farmers in this group become part of a, a group that says I'll buy and we we signed the pledge last last week and it was cool to see that you know let's get restaurant owners because I it's hard to eat out anymore I mean you just I mean I would love to go to a restaurant that had a Wallach menu it was like yeah. they, they did butter and salt right we didn't have to worry about any of the ingredients didn't have to ask a hundred questions. Uh, the, 
not to scare anybody, but even the uh, the GMO or the uh, gluten-free grains are now becoming in question because here's here's a new practice that they're doing. They're starting to desiccant spray all the grains, so meaning they dry them out before they harvest them, and uh, the industry's telling them though they've got more sugars. You have blah blah blah, and the problem is is now we got active glyphosate on things that aren't GMO. So if you're if you're eating something and you're having intestinal problems, remember because it's a it's a very strong antibiotic, and, and you eat something that supposedly is gluten free and you got belly problems, I'd quit eating that. So Ben Fuchs says keep a food diary, keep a food diary because you may need it, and it's just so there's hope, there's hope, and I think it's a combination. My my advice is, and you hear while I do it all the time. If you ever listen to listen him on the radio, he's always telling you what foods to avoid, what foods to eat. Listen to that. A lot of us just kind of skim over that. We just, you know, just go ahead back to our own diet. But if you really want to weather this storm, I think you, you better pay attention, closer attention to the, to the foods. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So Glenn, um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, have a sidebar chat, ask you some questions, pick your brain, come out and see your farm, how do they get a hold of you? Um so I've got a Facebook page, uh, Schultz Family Farms. So just look it up on, on Facebook. I'll give you a phone number, 303-868-4859. We are doing a number of gatherings at the farm. We're, we're having a, what I call the TED Talks of farming. So mm -hmm. we're calling farm talks. And uh, it's, it's getting to the point where we really have to start sharing this information with other other people who are who are ready to receive it. Not everybody's ready to receive this information, but uh, just recently we had a confirmation from a triple board certified MD. He's saying the same thing. We're killing our microbes. We're our plant. Our plants are worthless. We need to fix our farming. Okay, and I think uh, you just gotta look at it. We need to help our neighbors because not everybody's gonna do the. The tangy. We want them to, but not everybody's going to do that. But in the meantime, we farming is such a such a long haul fix. They need to be doing the tangy. So if I can help you transition people from this is more than just you know products for you to buy and sell and, and make a business of. It, it's actually going to save your life. That's what that's what I think I, I can do. For you. One more time with your Facebook page and your phone number. Okay, uh, Schultz. Family Farms on Facebook, look me up there, and 303-868-4859. Come out to the farm, see what we got going on, and, and we, we're gonna train people on what to do, how to eat, how to grow, you know, if you like to garden, all that. Yes, Trish. Well, I mentioned the uh, talk before the big Leadership Mastery next month. Oh yeah, yeah, so you're having the Leadership Mastery uh, and I decided to do a breakfast that Saturday morning, six o'clock, six to eight, two hours at Leadership Mastery, like before it starts. At, at the farm. farm. Oh, at the farm. Okay. At the farm. Which is where? Which is just south of Longmont. Okay. And um, so for the early birds, we're gonna we're gonna cook up some eggs. We're gonna have an egg breakfast. Maybe do a little talk. Tell them what to show people in his house. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and. Um, so for those who, who and, and not interrupt with what's going on, sure. we'll have people up and going and, and, and who want to see what's going on. That so sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank uh, Glenn Schultz. Give him a hand.